everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about neurogenic shock. So let's get into it. So as you can probably guess by the name, it involves your nervous system. So something has happened to the nervous system, it's caused damage, and now the patient is going into shock. So damage to your central nervous system, likely some sort of spinal cord injury. And so the patho of this, the way this affects the body. So structural compression or anything that's causing damage to your nervous system is the starter here. If you remember, your nervous system, it controls everything in your body, right? So it controls whether you have, um, you know, dilated blood vessels or constricted blood vessels. Um, it can affect your heart rate, it can affect your temperature, all of these things, right? So if it's not working properly, if it's been damaged, um, then it's going to start affecting other parts of your body. So structural compression leads to decreased venous return, so not enough blood flow. When you don't have enough blood flow, you have a decrease in stroke volume, and stroke volume directly affects our cardiac output, right? So a low stroke volume is going to equal a low cardiac output. And we don't want to have low cardiac output because remember, cardiac output is the blood that's being pumped throughout our body. We need that, right? We need that to be nice and normal. We don't want that to be decreased. So when it is decreased, there's less blood being pumped. That means there's also less oxygen getting to the body, right? Because the blood carries the oxygen. So decreased cardiac output leads to a decrease in overall systemic oxygen which leads to a decrease in tissue perfusion, so less oxygen going to our tissues. And then eventually, this will lead to impaired cellular metabolism. So the goal with neurogenic shock is to try and prevent this, right? To prevent it altogether from happening, um, but if your patient has it, trying to catch it as fast as we can. But this does happen really quickly. Over time, it can happen as well. Um, kind of depends on the cause. So, hemodynamic changes are seen in injuries above T6. So, knowing that um, if it is going to be a spinal cord injury related cause, knowing that these hemodynamic changes are more likely to be seen in injuries above level T6. So, when we talk about the causes, spinal cord injury, that's number one. I put stars next to it because we know it's the number one. But it's not the exclusive, it's not the only one. So, I do want to mention some other potential causes. Certain drugs, like illegal drugs or toxins that can cause damage to the nervous system. Um, Guillain-Barre. Um, the use of spinal anesthesia. Now, of course, we have to be very careful with that. Um, risks and benefits for getting any kind of anesthetic. Um, most people are not going to go into neurogenic shock because they receive spinal anesthesia. It's just something that is a potential risk, but rare, rare. Um, and then also transverse myelitis. So potential causes, but remember the big one is that spinal cord injury. When it comes to signs and symptoms, you're going to notice a pattern here. So the patient is going to be hypotensive, so a very low blood pressure, bradycardia, so low heart rate, hypothermia, or just regular temperature instability. They can't control their temperature and usually they get really cold. So they're going to have cold, clammy skin. They might become cyanotic, especially in like their mucous membranes around the lips. And then eventually they'll have a loss of consciousness. They'll be a little bit out of it and then eventually completely lose consciousness. So everything is going down. Just like when I talked about the patho, right? How everything got negatively affected, decreased venous return, decreased cardiac output, decreased oxygen, decreased perfusion. Everything is going down. And we are seeing that in the signs and symptoms. So when you are too hypotensive, your blood vessels are too dilated, you're not getting enough blood flow, right? So you're not getting enough oxygen to our tissues, to our organs. That decreased cardiac output, we have the decreased stroke volume, but we also have the decreased heart rate, right? So everything is going down, and we're able to see that reflected in the signs and symptoms. How is this diagnosed? Well, it's going to be based 
based on cause, right? So if your patient had a car accident and they've had a spinal cord injury, we're going to be able to tell, right? By just doing like their history, physical, head to toe, that kind of information. If they have a history of a nervous system disorder, if we know they've taken some sort of drug or been exposed to some sort of toxic substance, right? So that's usually how it's diagnosed because we already know things about the patient to figure it out. They might also want to do a CT scan and an MRI just in case, but a lot of it has to do with knowing the cause. And then those symptoms, right? These symptoms are very obvious. We're going to be able to tell that the patient has all of these. Remember, in other types of shock, these are not the common symptoms. They might be all over the place. They might have a low blood pressure, but a fast heartbeat, right? So this is a very specific thing that we're gonna be able to tell. Okay, this is neurogenic shock based on the symptoms, the history, the head to toe, all of that stuff. When it comes to our nursing interventions for these patients, our first thing we need to do is protect that spine. So immobilizing the spine, using things like collars, right? Because we don't want them to have a worse injury or a complication. To treat that hypotension, we're gonna use medications, but before that, the first thing we're gonna give is IV fluids. These patients are gonna be on strict INO, and they're gonna have a Foley catheter placed. One of the other things that happens when the patients are in shock is eventually they stop urinating. Um, so we need to know. Their urinary system just kind of stops. So we need to know what's going in and what's going out. So strict INO and we're going to place a Foley. Good thorough assessment. Solid head to toes on these patients. So assessing their skin, that cold clammy skin, that cyanosis. Um, of course, neurological system, we're going to be assessing their neurological system. And then vitals, frequent vitals, because we're starting to see those changes in the temperature, their blood pressure, their heart rate. So that's what we really want to keep an eye on. If they are too cold, rewarming them in a safe way, monitoring the rewarming, monitoring their temperature to make sure that we're not getting them too hot too fast. So safely rewarming these patients. Sometimes they'll need to be intubated and ventilated. Um, coping and support, because this is scary, right? This is shock. It's scary for the patient and it's scary for the family. So having them or the family express their concerns, their fears, answering questions, um, and being a supportive person for them. And then all of the medications, right? Because this is very serious. There's a lot of serious meds going on here. So vasopressors, that's going to help with that dilation, right? There's too much dilation going on. We need to constrict a little bit. We need to bring that blood pressure up. So vasopressors are going to help us with that. Atropine, that's going to help with that bradycardia that we're experiencing. Ephedrine, again, with that low um, blood pressure, so it's going to help bring that blood pressure up. Dopamine, again, vasoconstrictor, helping with that heart rate again. And then these patients are at risk for DVTs, for blood clots, because the blood does tend to pool. So they'll likely also be on an anticoagulant prophylactically, just in case, to prevent those blood clots. So neurogenic shock, very serious. Um, likely they're going to need a neurologist. They're going to need a specialist involved in this care. So, if you're taking care of one of these patients, you're probably going to be in the emergency room setting or the ICU setting because they are very, very ill. And that's Neurogenic Shock. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.